Hello and welcome to the first video of the binary numbers. In this video I would like to introduce you to the binary numbers and the binary number system but for us to understand that we need to look at what the decimal number system is and we need to look at the powers because powers are at the heart of every number system. So let's start with the powers. 3 to the power of 2 is 3 times 3 and for example 5 to the power of 4 is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 so there are two important concepts in here the power and the base they both can be any different whole numbers so the power tells us how many times we need to multiply the base together so in this particular case 4 tells me to multiply the base 5 by itself 4 times. And in the example of 3, the 2 tells me to multiply the 3 by itself twice. Now, there are two important powers that we need to draw your attention to. The first one is any number to the 0 power is by definition is always 1. For example, 7 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, and 10 to the power of 0 is also 1. Another important power is any number raised to the first power is just the number itself. For example, 7 to the first power equals to 7, 2 to the first power equals to 2 and 10 to the first power is equal to 10. By definition, the decimal number system is a base 10 positional number system which uses 10 digits and these 10 digits are 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 9. So that's the 9 digits plus 0, which makes them 10. Now, what does it mean, base 10 and positional? The base 10 tells you that you're using 10 digits and every place value or every position is represented by powers of 10. And it's a positional number system because if you place digits at different positions, they represent different values. The former mathematics is representing each of the place values 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, and so on. Now, what they mean as numbers? 10 to the 0, as we said before, it's 1. 10 to the 1 is 10. 10 to the 2 is 100 and 10 to the 3 is 1000. It might seem a little bit overcomplicated when you think about the decimal numbers, but it is already built into the way that we read out numbers. For example, if you read out 573, just the way you say the number, you talk about the decimal place values. 573. So the 100, 500 tells you that 5 is at the 100's place. The 70 tells you that 7 is at the 10's place and 3 tells you that 3 is at the unit's place. Now what happens if I use the same 3 digits but in a slightly different order? So what happens if I say 735? Well, as I was reading out the number, you probably noticed that now is 7 at the 100's place, 3 is at the 10's place, and 5 is at the unit's place. So depending on which place value I'm placing, or which position I'm placing the digits, they will represent different values. The 5 in the first number is 100, and the 5 in the second number is just 5 units. The 3 in the first number is 3 units, but in the second number is 3 tenths, which is 30. 
and the 7 in the first number is 7 tens, which is 70, and in the second number is 700, which is 700. Now, I would like to draw your attention to the rule of the zeros, because so far I just picked out any digits, which is a non-zero digit. But what happens if I have got zeros in my number? For example, what's the difference between 1000 and 7 and 17? Well, without having the zeros in the number, I end up with a very much smaller number. So the zeros are so-called place value holders. So they're telling me that at this place value, I'm not using any of the place value where I'm placing the zero. So in this case, I'm using seven of the units, I'm not using any of the tens, and I'm not using any of the hundreds, and I'm using one of the thousands. Without the zeros here, I'm just telling you that I'm using seven of the ones, and I'm using one of the tens. You will agree with me that the two numbers are very, very different. So, every time I need to build up a bigger number without using the in-between place values, I always had to place a zero here. Now, we can build up a decimal place value table, and the formal place value table would look like this. It's just basically the heading, you have got the powers, and the equivalent decimal values. Now how can you use a place value table like this to position different numbers in there? Now we talked about a few different numbers so let's see what they look like in the place value table. So 573 you put a 5 in the hundreds, 7 in the tens, 7 in the tens and 3 in the units column. If we're talking about 735 we mix up the order of the digits. 17, one of the tens, seven of the units, and 1007, one of the thousand, none of the hundreds, none of the tens, and seven of the units. One thing I'd like you to notice is when you look at the place value table, if you're going from right to left, you can spot that the numbers from place value to place value gets 10 times bigger. So the values themselves, the place values, get 10 times bigger. Now, if we reverse the order and we're going from left to right, the place values themselves get 10 times smaller. So this is again another important feature of the place values themselves, which will help us to extend the place value table in a later video to introduce smaller numbers. Now, we have got all the conceptual understanding that we need to build up the binary numbers. Binary numbers are very important for computer science because binary numbers are basically the way to communicate to the computer. Remember that the computer, at a very basic level, built up of small electrical circuits and you can either turn an electrical circuit on or off and in the different combinations of these electric circuits you can tell the computer to do different instructions. So depending on what kind of binary number instructions you're giving to the computer, the computer will carry out different calculations or different instructions. By definition, the binary number system is a base 2 positional number system. We're using two digits and these two digits are 0 and 1. So what does the place value table look for the binary numbers? Well because it's a base 2 number system every place value is a power of 2. So what are these powers? 2 to the power of 0 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 5, and I can go on forever. As you see, the difference is now that instead of base 10, I'm just replacing the 10 with a 2, but the powers themselves stay the same. Now, what does it mean for the actual values? What is 2 to the 0? 
Well, remember, any number to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 1, any number to the first power is itself, so it's 2. 2 to the 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 to the 3, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 to the 4 is 16. And 2 to the 5 is 32. And I can go on for higher values. So, when we look at the place values themselves, compared to the decimals, now when I go from right to left, the place values get doubled. So from 1 we can get to 2, from 2 we can get to 4, from 4 we can get to 8. They double up. And if I go from left to right, the opposite direction, they get halved. From 32 to 16 I get by halving it, and from 16 to 8 I get by halving it again. So this is a common feature of the place value tables. Any number system, because there are other different number systems, every time when you go from right to left, the place values get multiplied by the base. And when you go from left to right, the place values get divided by the base. So when we look at the binary place value table, it's like the numbers I showed you before but put into a nicer format. So what happens in the here? In the decimal place value table, we had quite a lot of different digits that we could play around with. We had the digits from 0 to 9. But what happens in binary? Which two digits can we use here? Just the 0 and the 1. So a binary number is nothing else but a string of 1s and zeros. For example, this is a binary number. What it means then for the place values is that with 1 I'm saying that use the corresponding place value and with 0 I'm saying don't use the corresponding place value. So the placeholder property of the 0 becomes really important and comes up a lot more often than in decimal numbers. Let's look at a few more binary numbers. So basically I can just use any ones and any zeros and place them in any order whatever to build up a binary number. So let's say 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 is a binary number. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is also a binary number. Or 1, 0, 1, 1, again a binary number. Now. You probably notice that because we're only using ones and zeros, every single one of them could also be a decimal number. For example, the last one could be 1011 in decimal. So how can we make a distinction between binary and decimal? So there is a very common notation to distinguish between binary and decimal numbers. So if you see a number which only uses ones and zeros, to make sure that this is a binary number, you put a little 2 in a subscript. And if you want to indicate that this is a decimal number, you put a little subscript of 10, indicating that this is a decimal number. So if it's not clear enough from context, always look for the subscript. Is it a binary number or is it a decimal number? Now, it's very, very important that you are making difference between the number itself and the notation of signaling which system we're working in. This little notation, the number 2 and here the number 10, are not part of the number as long as the calculations go. This is just a way of telling me or you or anybody else that this is a binary number. Once we are aware of that this is a binary number, this too becomes redundant. So as long as the calculations go, you can leave this number. So I hope that you have a better understanding of the binary and the decimal number systems. In the next few videos, I will show you what we can do with the binary numbers.